Okay, my wonderful friends, a little biology, geology, mineralogy, chemistry, the whole nine yards. And what are we looking at here? Whoops. We are looking at different types of chemistry. We have red, we have black, we have this strap looking thing, and all of these little, little tentacles. We have this in between the black and the red color. This is a heart. That is literally a heart. Now let me show you how I can stand behind that statement. Now the one that I showed you, you couldn't see the aorta and so forth, but you could see that is that that white line. Now, as they they transition, they take on the colors of the, the um, transition metal complexes, which are the browns and the reds and the yellows, because all it boils down to is how many oxygens you have attached to the different types of biology, and that changes the color. Let me show you the transition metals. Whenever you see colors, this is what makes them. Most, most crystals are silicon dioxide or carbon, and they incorporate these different colors into them, which change the color of the crystal. Amethyst is in the titanium vanadium range, which is purple. Other ones are different colors that take on these different other types of transition metals, which give them a different hue. All right, I show this because it's, it makes it extremely obvious. You see the different colors? The different colors co actually bond with different types of tissues. This is the ventricle lining, and these are what they call heart strings. And then you have the brown is where you have the interior of the aorta and so forth. And all these different colors are different metals that attach to different specific locations. And that's what transition metals are all about, and that's why they turn stone. All right, I was looking for some drone footage of El Capitan, and I came across this channel, Drone World. And this is El Capitan, and they did a fabulous job, and I think they're crazy for climbing up there, but very nicely done. And I'm going to show you all the different colors we were just talking about, reds and blacks and, you know, gray and all that. Because anytime it gets exposed to oxygen and it's in the elements, it changes from that red color down to a, a tannish looking color like that. Now, here it goes. I'm, and again, this is Drone World and I appreciate their, their uh, input here. You see the black coming out of there? That's the vein blood. This is the other artery blood. And watch for all the little stripes and variegations in there. See, that's blood running off. These are layers of actually muscle tissue that are peeling off. Look at this, this is where they are right here. Can you imagine? I'm saying it's insane. You see all this striping here? All of that stuff is the connective tissue that allows the heart to constrict. You see the heart, the blood colors here? Muscle comes in striations, and that's where this is breaking off in these little pieces. But you see all these different, you see all of that stuff is connective tissue, all of that is. And that's what allows the heart to do that. Let's see what else we got here. This thing is absolutely enormous. 
see all those little connective tissues everywhere. You see the black, you see the brown, you don't see a lot of red because red weathers into lighter colored brown and yellows. Connective tissues. It's everywhere. Pretty amazing. All right, as most people that know me know, I have sort of an issue with not being able to understand what I'm looking at. <laughs> and this was El Capitan, and they're saying 20 things that'll make you say, wow. And this was kind of interesting. Now, Listen to what they have to say, because it explains everything about it, and then I'll tell you why they're having a river of fire come out of here. National Park in California's Sierra Nevada Mountains is known for its gigantic old sequoia trees and stunning rock formations such as El Capitan and Half Dome, Horsetail Fall, a seasonal waterfall that cascades down the eastern edge of El Capitan. Every winter is the major attraction of the pristine preserve from mid to late February. The 1,500 foot tall waterfall regularly changes into a stunning natural firefall over for the brief two-week time frame. Many sir okay, let me explain to you. There's an artery coming up this thing. <laughs> it, there's, there's a aorta or wherever that water's coming out, and the ground pressure forces it up. It only happens at certain times of the year. But then why is it yellow? Let's go back and look at that again. Why is it yellow? I can tell you why it's yellow, but you think about it. Here it goes. Capitan, every winter, is the major attraction of the pristine preserve from mid to late February. The 1,500 foot tall waterfall regularly changes into a stunning natural firefall over the brief two week time frame. Many circumstances must be properly aligned for the natural occurrence to happen. For starters, there must be enough snow and warm enough temperatures for it to melt and generate a brief cascade. Horse All right, it's, it's, it's not not just running off the top, it's, there has to be enough snow melt in the ground to force the water pressure up to come out of there. That's not just runoff, I don't believe. But I can tell you why it is this color. Horse tail fall is limited to a trickle or may not occur at all during dry or severely cold years. Even a tiny haze can destroy the appearance of flames rolling down the cliffs. Therefore, the skies must be perfectly pure and cloudless. Most essential, the sun must strike the water at a specific angle to let it... There it is right there. First of all, you have to have enough moisture in the air to create something for the light to collide with and the angle of the light has to be exactly correct to make it go into that spectrum i'll show you all right this is the reason it gets red i mean it gets um like fire is yellowish it's right in the 600 wavelength range now that's a little shorter red is a longer wavelength. A little quicker is, is yellow. Very fast is, you know, ultraviolet down. It, it, this is the progression of speed. So it's basically backwards. But this is what's happened. When the sun is at a certain angle, by the time it gets through all the layers of the atmosphere, it's in this range. If it was coming straight down, it may be way down here. That's why you get sunburn in certain places. 